Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please press that like button and subscribe to the channel. It'll help me out a ton. So in this video, I'm going to be answering questions on the Hotwire forum. This is a forum where people can ask questions about the Hotwire framework, which is the built-in framework for Ruby on Rails when you're adding interactive front end. Answer some more questions and hopefully this will help you if you're learning Hotwire. And if you're not, at least you're seeing that there is people out there who are helping other people learn these frameworks. Anyways, let's get right into the video. The first question we have is struggling with a simple turbo stream update for sidebar navigation. So let's see, this is the first time Ogarikius has posted. Sweet. So it says, uh, the turbo trigger link is just refreshing the page for my user show view. Hmm. Well, that's not good. I tried turbo stream replace and turbo stream update, also pointing to the right to the frame, right main content. But all that's happening is reloading the user show view, which is the fallback part of the dance journal method. Am I overlooking something? All the tutorials in ChatGPT I'm seeing seems to show I'm setting this up correctly. Also, I do have turbo frame set up for pagination on some of the other pages on my site. So I'm sure that I have Turbo installed correctly. On my user show view, I have a sidebar rendered via partial. Layout sidebar content. Okay. This is cool, you're rendering sidebar. Also on the user show view, I have a section wrapped in the Turbo frame. In content. Okay, this looks good. In content divs. Inside of the sidebar content partial, I have a link to the dance journal journal path and then it has data turbo frame right main content okay Please. this link should target that frame and then replace the inner content okay so it looks normal dance journal partial is simple just this inside of my user's controller i have a dance journal method following Stream. Render turbo stream turbo stream dot update answer no okay he's definitely doing this wrong so he's trying to have a, a link respond with a turbo stream I was able to find that if I have the link inside of the turbo frame right main content the page updates as expected so now I'm trying to figure out how I can trigger the same behavior from a link and outside of the turbo frame okay so He's got it all wrong, basically. He's trying to use a turbo stream when he should just be using a view partial with a turbo frame. So I'm going to try to tell him. Oh, you. Okay. Since you are trying to trigger, since you're trying to navigate the frame, or how would I say, like, your code or your link is correct and it is navigating the turbo frame but you are using the but your but the <laughs> dance journal method in the controller is not set up correct. When you use a turbo frame and it when you use a turbo frame and make a request via the link, it is looking for a matching turbo frame on the page you're navigating to. Uh, if you want to so like, if you want to respond, well, it's kind of tricky because the way that he's doing it, he could do this, but he can't do it uh, like this. You know what I mean? A link targeting a turbo frame. I need to tell him like, but you are confusing. Turbo frames with turbo streams. Uh, if you want to respond with a turbo stream, 
then you must then remove the remove this part the data turbo frame under the link and replace it with a data turbo method to make it trigger a post request and make sure the dance journal well is also expecting a post request this is one way to fix your issue and leaving the current controller set up. The other way is to just use turbo frames, which would mean your dance journal method must have a matching view dance journal .html to ear b and inside of the view we would add a matching turbo frame tag so like he showed he had this turbo frame tag right here main content so i'm just gonna show him an example and then just render the same thing as he had in the controller so right here turbo stream update Ah, so that's why he wants to return a turbo stream. Uh, but also, he could just render the partial. This. Render dance journal user user. So I'm going to reply. And boom. Now I added a reply. Let's also upload him because he seems like he's just getting. Well, it's his first post and he's just learning how to use turbo. So I'm going to try to see if this helps. Uh, maybe we should add more reference too since he's so new. So like if you want to respond with turbo stream, replace it with a data turbo method. How about we turn that into a link? And then I'll give him the link to the data turbo method docs. Yeah, right here. Data turbo method. There's so much. Look at this. It's insane. So like how do I even refer him to this specific spot? I don't know. I guess I'll just have to give him this. There we go. We answered the first question. So answer question is really good because these people are trying to learn. Like this guy's question is very valid and he just doesn't really understand the differences in the hotwire framework. So I'm glad that I was able to explain that and make it hopefully make it a little bit easier. Let's see if he replies back to it and I'll be able to Maybe give him some further advice. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So this one says, issue with progressively enhancing form submission. This is the one that I actually wanted to do because I saw this in my email. I got an update of the new post on Hotwire discussion. This is cool, and it's the first time Seb has posted. Welcome, Seb. He says, I currently have an issue with using turbo frames to progressively enhance a form. Context is, I generally use turbo frames as a way to enhance the user experience by inline presenting forms that have their standalone pages. But my expectation and why I use turbo frames is that I can build a form pretending that JS is disabled for the end user, know when the user clicks the link, sign up, it'll navigate to the sign up page. Only after this is done and working, will I then wrap the form in a turbo frame tag and present it inline when the user click in another context. Okay, that's fair. So he's trying to progressively enhance and that's what Hotware is all about. So if JavaScript wasn't enabled, the link should still do the same thing. It should still open up that page. So it says, inside my form, I have a submit button and a cancel button. Let's see what it looks like. It has this form. He's doing this weird thing with errors, like inline Ruby definitions. But that just seems like it's specific to his app. So that's fine. Fire fields, okay, fine. Anyway, this just looks like a normal form. Okay, so then he has it in his new parse or new template. 
should not be seen a turbo frame. Yep. So then this is the turbo frame. Okay. We render the form. When a user clicks add parent button, if JS is enabled, it should present the turbo frame content inline. This works great. When they click cancel, it correctly closes out the frame and replaces itself with the original content. When the user navigates to the full page view URL, everything looks great. User cancel. Okay, so basically he's saying he's trying to have an app that works when the user disabled their JavaScript. What world is the user going to disable their JavaScript unless they're some sort of hacker who's trying to hide from people? Okay, fine. So let's keep going. I don't see what his issue is. However, when the user navigates to the full page view URL and submits the form with errors, the cancel button does not navigate to the correct page with a full page refresh. Instead, treats the form as a turbo frame and tries to replace its content. Yeah, I mean, obviously. Okay, so this is a very simple one. Here's the thing, his cancel button, First of all, I don't know what cancel button means for him, but I'm guessing you can add in attributes. He needs to target turbo frame top. Is not or no, it's target underscore top. Let's look it up. Target underscore top and hot wire. This will fix this issue. When do you use target top? But consider like this was posted two years and ten months ago. That's how long this framework has been out, which I guess is pretty young compared to all the other JavaScript frameworks. But for me, I just, I feel like I just started using it, which is insane. Okay, so target top, you put it on the frame target attribute. Yeah, I need to like mess with it more. Maybe turbo frame top. I think I need to go back to here. So turbo frame for the frames documentation. So I just have to figure out the one that's gonna help him. Target refers to Another turbo frame when target equals top. Oh, wait, no, but <laughs> this is not a turbo frame, right? Uh, I'm trying to find the link in here that navigates outside of the frame. I'm trying to find that example for him. I don't really see it. Maybe right here. There's so much. I'm trying to see how to navigate outside of a frame. Oh, right here. All right. Target top. Ah, so all he has to do is add target top. I guess that's basically it. Um, yeah, okay. Let's, let's uh, thumbs up it, just because I think it's a good question, and then I'll write my reply. Or wait, no, I'll write my answer. <laughs> Or is that all we can do is just reply? Okay, wait. Of course, I just need to reply. So I'm gonna say your form setup looks good, and it's a great way to progressively enhance the hot wire. Um, 
Maybe I don't even need to say that part. <laughs> what you're looking for is the or the target top. Set this on the turbo frame on your new templates. This will mean when you load the page, you fully load the page. No, this will mean. I don't even have to really tell him what that means. <laughs> but the target top, I'm going to make this refer to the, wait, how do I turn to a link right here? Here. References. And I'm going to take his new template thing. And I'm going to add target top. Let's say this will make your, this will make, the links inside of the turbo frame uh, navigate uh, the full page instead of only the frame. But your initial frame will still work because when Turbo frame gets replaced. It keeps the original. It doesn't. Add, it doesn't add the target top. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Let's see what that looks like. Your form setup looks good, and it's a good way to build a PWA with hardware. Okay, let's just leave that part since now we're so complex. I need to make it. What you're looking for is a target top option. You can set this on the tur table on the turbo frame on your new template. This will make the links inside of your turbo frame navigate the full page instead of only the frame. Maybe I don't need this last part where I like try to explain it because let's keep it simple. And then if he does ask for more context, I can do the full answer. Anyways, there we go. Keep it simple, and that's just all he needs to do is add the target top on his new template. I'll be good to go. All right, so let's see what else. We have this other one. Which looks like it's trending. There's seven replies, a thousand views. Stimulus suggestion, controller aliases. Oh, this is one of those ones that's kind of controversial. They first posted it in 2022. Wow. I would love the ability to Elias, a controller name is Stimulus. Elias, I think. <laughs> Not Elias, wait. What is it? Loader, product loader. What? Like, think there are times you need multiple versions of the same controller. Perhaps a product loader and a category loader. Same area that are both loader controllers. Eliases will allow two versions of the same controller to overlap without conflict. Interesting. So maybe like they inherit from one another. Self document. Leash said, not something we need, but not to say others don't. Be on the namespace controllers like Elias dash dash toggle. That was Elias. Says. Admin dash dash toggle. <laughs> I think that was a typo. I'm so confused. So I don't even know what they're saying, Elias. Or no, Alias. Why am I saying Elias? Alias. What do they mean, Alias? They're saying you can have multiple controllers nested with each other and them as other. Interesting. You have multiple controllers side by side in the context. Thanks. Okay. Came across a need for something like this just this week. There's no way to isolate specific targets for specific controllers. Multiple of the same controller with the same hierarchy. Yeah, that's true. 
like think about that's that's the thing that you get when you start relying on a framework one of these and there's like specific use cases that you might come across but why are we doing weren't we trying to get away from doing all the custom javascript like why do these dudes have all of this stimulus javascript stimulus was supposed to be a sprinkle it wasn't supposed to be something that's like you know, why are you even doing a loader url think about that why is he even doing a loader URL value? You're supposed to get rid of that with Hotwire and Turbo Frames, Turbo Streams. We could just use a Turbo Frame with a source and a lazy loader. We could not have any custom JavaScript. Now, I don't know if I should write that because it's not very helpful. But I feel like these guys are really getting away from the core concept of Hotwire. All right, anyways. Let's go on to the next question. Form on index page with more font success. It's been a while since you've seen Airblade. The last post was five years ago. You have to be an old. Uh, he joined 2019. <laughs> so he posted five years ago and he's finally back. That's awesome. Welcome back. I have an index page showing a list of records and I want to have a form for adding new records. Rushes morphs the page when records are created. I've got it working, but my implementation feels suboptimal. And as if I missed something, any feedback would be much appreciated. My index page re renders the records as normal. I have an add post link which shows the post form. To make the form replace the add post link, I wrap them both in the same turbo frame. Oh, yeah, I like that. Place it now one invalid form submission to render the form with validation errors at the turbo frame. This works. Next, I want to valid. So refresh the index page. Moving the form and adding the add post button again. Red redirecting to the index page. This, of course, simply updates the turbo frame. Doesn't refresh the list of posts. Now I tried getting the form to target the whole page. Okay. Data turbo frame top. This works for valid form submissions, but breaks for invalid form submission. That invalid form. With validation errors is rendered on new page, somehow despite render new status on possible entity. Fonts breaks out of the turbo frame. Yeah, because you did data you did turbo frame top. So I removed the data turbo frame top and found a way to break out of the frame from the server. Turbo stream action refresh top. I've never seen that before. That has to be new. Okay, now this does everything I want, but it feels wrong to have to resort to a turbo stream response to force the refresh. Can anyone show me a better way? Finally, I should mention that my model is broadcasting refreshes. Next page is listening to broadcasts. Yeah, that's cool. You can see this working when I upload a post in the Rails console, but in the page automatically refreshes. However, it doesn't help my form situation. I think that's because broadcasts caused by your own requests are discarded. As far as I understand, Oh, interesting. So he's broadcasting and he has turbo stream from that post. Mm. Question would be what's at post on the index? Right, he doesn't have a post on the index. So let's see what this guy answers. Sorry, after more testing, I didn't manage to solve the issue you're describing without using turbo streams. The solution is the best I came up with based on the advice. Set up the form. The form is enable morph. What the heck? Why did he say all this? Okay, so I was honestly thinking the same thing. Like maybe there's a problem with. Uh, like the way he's doing it, but no, this looks crazy. This looks crazy. So actually, I'm gonna reply my answer. I'm gonna first favorite it. Welcome back, guy, for five years ago, and I'm gonna try to do my answer. I think the issue here is <clears throat> how about setup looks good, and if the broadcast were working. Then you would 
Ying, and your app would be working expected. The posts are getting updated as they are created. Uh, so the turbo frame. I think it's because you're doing a turbo because you're doing that turbo refresh. So when it saves your turbo stream refresh top. Which what does that mean? Does that mean just reload the page? I don't even know what he's saying. This guy even tried to do it himself. But like, I just don't like, this doesn't make sense because if he's reloading, it should already have gotten a new post, but somehow the refresh isn't really like a reload. So I don't even know what that is. Maybe we'll come back to that. I don't know. Okay, let's try to answer ones that nobody else has answered. It might be a little bit easier. So bind function and remove event. This is the first time Alex has posted. Hey, welcome, Alex. I'd like to ask a question about the class syntax using JavaScript to define a method and remove an event in the context of stimulus. All the documentation I've consulted, I've never seen the use of arrow function. For example, this find foo. Seems strange that I've never seen a bound method in the constructor like this dot bind found foo and I don't see a remove event listener in the disconnect method. I tried to explain to my colleagues that it'd be more judicious to use error functions to have the functions automatically bond. Not really sure what he's saying. But I'm personally more familiar with React. And then I would as any use know the reason to use or not use bind in the Steamless controller and the usefulness of not removing the event listeners. If I could use a bind functions and disconnect. Uh, on stimulus. You generally want to avoid using that event listener. You use the API for use a data action on your elements instead to call functions out of events. And I'll give him a link to uh, the turbo docs. Yes. Events, right? Like this. This might not be stimulus events though. Yeah, stimulus docs are different. Right here they have the stimulus handbook. Stimulus docs are cool, but I just feel like you don't need to rely on that much JavaScript like they're doing. The whole point was to have a really simple app, you know what I mean? But whatever. People get there because you need to have your all your different things. Okay, so I'm going to give them the actions. I'm going to be like, check out the docs here. Turn this to a link. Okay. And then what else do you want to say about your question for find? I have used this before. And particularly when I want to oops, I'm spelling particularly wrong. <laughs> when I want to pass a function to a framework. Maybe as a callback and keep the context of the controller so I can access things like the thought element and better. I feel like that's a good answer. Now I didn't spell particularly right. That's okay. All right, I'm gonna reply. It's also thumbs it up. Sweet. So we did three different answers and 
I've been doing answers on here forever. So let's quickly just go over some of my previous answers. So authentication and device with broadcasts. I don't know if I've answered in here. Fine here. Somehow like a part of this. <laughs> I used to love doing answers. Here, I can probably pull up my answers. I already have some badges here from like things that I've done. Hot link, so let's see what that is. Stimulus controller granted. When a link you share got 300 clicks. Wow. Right here, look, I posted in January 2021. That's over three years ago. It said stimulus controller not connecting inside of lazy loaded turbo frame. This was like a while ago. It got 2k views. Only two likes, insanely. And I was like, looks like the problem is getting fixed in a new update. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was like the only guy on here when it first came out. I was really in there. Okay, so let me try to pull up some of my previous answers. Uh, pop reply, stimulus controller is not working at first use, rail 7. So this guy had and had asked this question back in May 2022. Like his assets weren't working, nothing was set up. So I said to run Rails assets clobber. And it looks like three other people liked it. So and he said my hero helped. This guy said, holy cow, I was looking for a solution. Thanks very much. I was spending hours trying to figure out what was wrong. And this finally helped. Thanks for this. It saved me countless hours. And this is just like over the years I've helped this many people just by this one answer. In the Hotwire forum, I feel really cool about this. And I'm glad that I can keep helping people. Even back in December 2020, 2020 problems deploying to Heroku. At this one, got 1.5k views. Ah, uh, because you had to do this weird thing. You had to say like the app assets JavaScript libraries is required by import map, but it doesn't exist in the repo. This guy. So see, I had the problem back here. This is when I was first like learning, basically. I was still, I mean, I would already been making apps for like six months, but I was first like getting into the Hotwire framework when that was coming out. That's some good memories. Yeah, I think I just have like all of these. Look at this, that's a good amount of answers. I feel like now for me, coming back to this and then getting to record as I answer people's questions, this is just awesome. I've also been doing it on Stack Overflow too. Multiple word controllers. I think, see like all these different questions that I was answering back then. Because it was fun for me. And boom, we got three new answers right here. And I'll just keep going. But right now I'm kind of tired on it. It's kind of late, but I'm really excited to make more videos for you guys. I'm going to be back in here just with consistent content. I'm very excited. I have my setup all perfect right now, and I'm ready to just keep grinding and making more content for you guys. Let me know what else you want me to build too in the future. I'm trying to get back on my videos for creating different, like crazy app ideas and rebuilding companies and stuff. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have yourself an amazing rest of your day. All right, guys, it's been a day since I answered this question, and we already have one response. So I'm going to check it out. So Seb said, this is exactly what I needed. Thank you so much. I was previously modifying the target inside the cancel slash submit links in the frame, which was not working. By modifying the target in the frame, it works as expected. Awesome. I'm glad I could help you, Seb. See, just doing a simple answer like this, where I just pointed him in the right direction, has helped somebody else in their app tremendously. He posted this three days ago, and he still hadn't figured it out until I answered it last night. This goes to show what you can do and how you can help somebody else just by answering questions. So should we try to answer some more in celebration of this person's success? Let's see, delete empty params on form submit. It's been a while since we've seen Arter79. Their last post was five months ago. Wow, well, it's good to see you back, Arter. Hi, I've got a form with turbo frame param and Frame has data turbo action advanced because I want to update the URL to have params filters there. I need to delete some form fields on form submit, especially empty params like foo or bar. Is it possible to do this, for example, in callback in stimulus controller? 
saw element add event listener turbo submit start. Hmm. I mean, this question is not very good because this code is kind of like broken, but he's he's showing what he wants to do. Uh, but I'm not really sure what he means. He wants to delete these if they're empty. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that one. So let's skip that one. Let's go to the next one. Turbo stream updating DOM inconsistently upon broadcast from model. This is the first time Ensign Shikov has posted. Let's welcome them to community. Hey, welcome, bro. Trying to update a certain element on the page when I delete another element, and I want to do that without reloading the entire page. But I figured turbo streams might be a good idea. I wanted to try and broadcast from the model, so I added a call back there. Use broadcast update to stats, partial, targeting, so that's good. I'm also rendering the stats partial on my index page. I subscribe to the stats turbo stream at the top of index, and I'm rendering the stats partial inside a div with ID user stats, and it works sometimes. When I delete a record, I can see the stats update in real time without having to manually refresh the page. And then I do refresh the page manually, and then I add another record, try to delete it, and the counter doesn't update in real time. I check the console, the correct partial with the updated stats, stocks get sent to the stream, and the HTML is correct, but the stats themselves don't change. What changes upon a page refresh then for something, for everything to stop working? Why does it work the first time, but not after a manual page refresh? Huh. I'm not really sure what he's saying. Try to refresh. Counter doesn't update in real time. Let's update. That's. Uh, Stats. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> One thing is he's turbo streaming from a from a constant identifier, which means this would be the same for every user who's on this page. So I'm not sure if that would cause any issues. I guess it would depend what does the stats look like. I'll try to answer him. I'm not sure what's going wrong. So I see a few things. So I see you are using stats identifier. I mean, your broadcast gets sent to every user viewing this page for every record. What you were expecting, you want to uh, only broadcast new records to the user who created them. Stream. Not sure if this would help. You want to share the content of the shared stats partial. It might help me determine the issue. Let's see if he wants to share more about the problem. I might be able to help him. Although this was 11 days ago, so you think that he solved it already? I don't know. These challenges can be tricky. Just having something like that can really mess up your day. All right, this guy said browser back button not working. It's been a while since we've seen Ruby Monkey. Their last post was one year ago. Wow. And look, nobody answered. That's crazy. Nobody wanted to answer. But sometimes these questions are tricky. Like, I couldn't answer the other one because I just don't really have enough context about you know, overriding the turbo submit event. Uh, Ruby Monkey says, hi, guys. I encountered a problem that the browser back button does not work. Let's say I want to. I went to a page with a list of all topics then went to a page with a specific topic and pressed the back button. The URL on the address bar changes localhost topics, but the content of the page itself does not change. That's interesting. If I disable the turbo on the link with data turbo false, remove one single turbo frame from index page and show page, everything works correctly. I do not use JS controllers that could change the browser history. All right, so I think what's happening is he's inside of a turbo frame. All right, 
turbo frame content. And then he's going to a topic path. Okay, it also has a turbo frame. Um this is interesting. Or I'm gonna say I'm sorry. It's an error. Can't tell the issue from here, but possibly with the cancel link. Back button is not going to the back button to navigate the frame back to the original index path and replace with the original frame contents. This would not change the URL of the page, or maybe it would. Do you think it would because he's using data turbo action advance? It actually would change the URL. So let's reply and let's see if he gets back to us. More questions, but I really want to answer the ones without any answers just because I feel like they're being left behind. Using Turbo Native Strata to build a cross platform desktop app. Do you think that using Turbo Native Strata to build a cross platform desktop app is a possible outcome? I have an SPA web app, and now I need to embed some of the views in the SPA into a desktop app. Wrapping the web view is not enough, as the desktop app needs to receive said messages from the web server, not only display the component on the screen, but also use the message to control some external hardware. So, yes, I think this would be possible because with Turbo Native, or how about the Turbo, yeah, Turbo Native Frameworks, have easy ways to switch uh, from using a web view to using a fully native view with <laughs> that you could integrate. Or you could add your native features and then communicate with the web app. Normal API using an API request. I think I'll just reply with that. I think it would be possible to do a desktop app, and actually, that's something I want to do for this channel, not in this video, but in a, in a very soon video. I'd love to make a Turbo Native desktop app. That just sounds cool. Let's see, I guess the other one, this guy Talish, he was answering a lot of questions. Shout out Talish, he's like the dude who really, he's probably been more consistent than me because I haven't even been on here in like years. That was just like, I don't know, not on the forum. We don't have a Turbo Stream Morph Helper yet. Yeah, I guess not. We do have a Morph Helper method, so why isn't it working? I have no idea. Never mind, it was added three days ago. <laughs> okay. So it's coming soon. I also, I don't even know the difference between morphing. I mean, I kind of do morphing means like it's, it just only changes the differences in HTML instead of replacing the whole thing, which could preserve things like scroll position and other stuff like that. So that is kind of sick, but I haven't got to mess with it yet in my app. And look at all these like older questions that just nobody kind of answered. There's still a lot for us to do, if you think about it. Wait, is this me? It's me. Idea of a new HTML markup language. Did I say something here? Might be good for an abstraction framework for stimulus, but not something I see being added to the core library. The stimulus core principle is to write less JavaScript and move away from the React style of coding styles. And then he said, yes. And sorry, it was not clear mention. It would need a JS library too, maybe based on stimulus that could respond with the HTML markup. Huh. So this guy's kind of just like looking for, look at what he's trying to do. He's trying to have like some insane JavaScript find value A and then like A plus B plus equals AB. Like this is crazy. This is basically trying to do some sort of Alpine JS or Svelte. I've never messed with that, but it might be cool. All right, well anyways, I feel like we covered a lot of questions in this video. 
and I'm very excited to share this with you guys. So hope you enjoyed. If you did, please smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And stay tuned for future videos where I'm going to create awesome content for programming and using Ruby on Rails.